Hi everyone! Today I'm going to walk you through my thought process while I paint a portrait based on a photo of my sister. If you'd rather not hear me talk, I've also uploaded a music-only version of this video that I'll link down below. These are the colors I'll be using for this painting. I'll list these and the materials I use in the description too. I'm adding a wash of blue mixed with mineral spirits first. Some people ask why I lay down a color before I start painting. Sometimes it's a wash and sometimes it's a very opaque color, but each of these base colors can show through the layers of paint that I add above it. So I find it adds a bit of interest to the texture and also sets a tone for the entire piece. You'll kind of see that in this first layer of paint, the skin tone will be a little bit more blue or more neutral because one, it's mixing with the still wet wash, and two, I instinctively reach for bluer colors because I'm comparing it to the already blue background. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but I hope that helps some of you understand my thought process. Anyway, it doesn't really matter in this case because I ended up changing the colors in this a lot. For this first layer of blocking in the colors of the skin, I'm using a mix of mineral spirits and stand oil to thin the paint. I want to start with thin layers that dry more quickly, then gradually use more paint so that the painting doesn't end up cracking when drying later. I didn't have much of a plan for this piece, I just knew I wanted to play with the lighting and color. The original photo is mostly in shadow, but I wanted it to look like the sun was just going down and give it a bit of a warm glow instead. Because of this, I tried not to use any black here because I wanted the darker shadows like the eyelid and inside the mouth to have a warmer feel, and I didn't want to desaturate the colors which black tends to do. Instead, I used a mixture of alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, and then a touch of yellow to keep it from becoming just a purple color, and then used a spotter brush to get those tinier details. Now I'm adding a bit more red to give the skin some more vibrance, and I'm using a larger brush to even out the texture and lay down a thicker layer of paint. Since I want the illusion of a warm light, I don't want to use just white for the highlights, so I'm using white plus a bit of red and yellow, and I'm mixing it in with the paint that's already on the panel in the spots that I don't want to be quite as bright. I started the hair with the mixture of crimson, blue, and yellow that I used for the shadows, but this time I added a bit of transparent red oxide as well for a little warmer color. I want to start with a dark color for the hair because it's much easier to build light strands onto the top of darker color than it is to add shadows around the light strands. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm adding kind of a blue gradient for the background since the sky tends to get darker the higher it is from the horizon, but I added a touch of yellow near the bottom because I did want it to have a hint of it being near a sunset. After adding the background, I usually use a brush to go over the edges of the hair so it blends in. I don't want the hair to have too sharp of an edge, especially because sharper edges draw the eye and we don't want that to be the focal point of the piece. 
I'm using this spotter brush again to add in the stray hairs with the original hair color, but I'm allowing the color to mix with the blue background again because these strands will look lighter than the rest of the hair because they're so thin and I don't want them to stick out too much. Now I'm trying to brighten up the face a bit more. I wanted it to look like the sun was producing a really bright, direct light, so I was making the values of the face more uniform, and later on I added some harsher shadows to create that effect too. You're gonna see me just tinker with everything a lot, just trying to figure out what I like in terms of color and value. This is how my paintings usually go. I'm not much of a planner and I'm still learning what works. So my process is kind of all over the place and it goes through a lot of changes. I really try to give myself some wiggle room though in terms of technique and style just because I don't want to restrict myself and I think it's the best way that I learn. So I don't really stick to any particular set of steps. I just do whatever feels right for the piece. Sometimes not having a plan comes back to haunt me in the end, but I also think it's really fun to take risks and not be locked into one idea. Something was missing with the color in the background, so I started messing around with the values and making it darker at the top to create more contrast in the gradient. When that wasn't enough, I decided to add some speckles of blue to add some difference in texture. And to do this, I used a very thin mixture of paint and mineral spirits and a very stiff hair brush. If you don't have a brush like this, I've seen some people use a toothbrush, and I'm not really sure how well it works, but you could definitely try it out. I set this aside for a few days and realized I just didn't like the colors, so I decided to just take a risk and go over the entire background again. Still a gradient to get that sky effect, but this time with a brighter color. I used a mixture of radiant turquoise and cadmium yellow light for this. It may seem like an extreme change compared to the original color, but I really wanted to try and create a really vibrant look. By this time, most of the original paint was dry, so I didn't have to worry about the two sky colors mixing. Because I still wasn't happy with the lighting on the face, I started adding in a dark blue to the shadows, also decided the tones of the face weren't bright enough either compared to the sky now, so began adding some more yellow to the face as well. I really didn't like the blue color in the shadows because it looked too green since it mixed with the yellow, so I decided to go with a warmer purple color for the shadows instead. 
Shadow colors are generally more neutral or grayer tones than the color in the direct light because the light and the shadows are going to be from all the light that's bouncing off the environment around the subject. This is also known as bounced light or ambient light or indirect light. There's a ton of names for it. So in this instance, because the bluish sky is producing a bluish light, I also want everything that isn't as affected by the direct warm light of the sun to be a little cooler. If you want to learn more about how bounce light or indirect light works, just look it up on YouTube. There's a ton of great video resources out there. At this point, I decided I didn't want her to be fully lit up by the sun. Instead, I just wanted part of her face to be lit up and the rest would be more in shadow. This way, the spot where the sun hits will look even more striking. I started adding a mix of cerulean blue, alizarin crimson, and radiant turquoise, which I used in the sky, to where I wanted it to be in shadow. The yellow that's already on the panel would mix in with that color and neutralize it to give it more of a grayed look. I added a tiny bit of mineral spirits and stand oil to this mixture so that it stayed a little transparent. At this point, I realized that I had accidentally given her a literal 5 o'clock shadow, so I decided to move it a bit further down her face and make it more of a blurred shadow to create the illusion that something farther away was blocking the sun. I started adding some more yellow to the face again because I wanted to really contrast where the sunlight was compared to the shadow. My sister's eyes are a bluish gray with a bit of brown in them and they look green when they mix with sunlight so I really wanted to get that across. I also added some more crimson in the middle of the iris to reflect the warmness of the sunlight on the brown parts and also made the whites of the eyes a warm color as well. Remember that people's eyes are not just pure white, they're often darker than you'd expect and reflect the colors of their environment. I like to add a little bit of red at the edges too, I think it adds a humanness to them, but I also don't really stick to one color because I kind of like to see what I can get away with. After a few weeks of leaving this painting to dry, I'm using a retouching varnish to even out the finish. You can use a retouching varnish on paintings that are dry to the touch but maybe haven't had the months they need to dry completely. Mm -hmm. 
So here's the finished product. I'm way happier with the colors now than I was halfway through it. But in all honesty, I wouldn't change anything that I did. Without the different techniques and colors I tried, I wouldn't have gotten the same result, and I learned a lot in the process. I hope you like it, and maybe learn something from this too. Thank you.